an officer opened my door and with him were three large prison service bags and he said to me, Ahmad, you have 15 minutes. We only had a pair of boxer shorts in order to aggravate us. A non-Muslim prisoner, he attacked a Muslim prisoner and then some time later, the Muslim prisoners, they beat him up. I gave the order for that prisoner to be beaten up. He was in his 30s and he was a large muscular guy and um, he said, uh, he said, you don't remember me, do you? Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. It was Thursday, 30th of November 2006, just before 8 o'clock in the morning. I was in Woodhill Prison in Milton Keynes when an officer opened my door and with him were three large prison service bags and he said to me, Ahmad, you have 15 minutes to get all your things together, you're being transferred. And that is something that every prisoner fears. Imagine you live in a house where you've lived in for several years, you know the neighbours, you, you know the neighbourhood, you have a routine, and then someone just comes to you one day and say you have 15 minutes, pack up your things and you're leaving and you don't know where you're going. So I quickly went to the window and I shouted out to the other Muslim brothers and I told them that I'm going and I'm being transferred and I said salam to them. I quickly packed all of my things and I went down to reception. I was put into, I was subjected to the strip search routine and put into a um, prison jumpsuit and then put into the van. With me was another Muslim brother, so that was some sort of consolation that at least wherever I'm going, at least there is someone with me. So we got into this van. I didn't know where I was going because as a category a prisoner, you're not told for security reasons, they don't tell you where you are actually going. What I do remember is that the officers in the van, they were trying very hard to try and provoke and upset. Uh, myself and the other brother. They put the air conditioning on high in the van and since we only had a pair of boxer shorts and the thin jumpsuit on we were very very cold. I was literally I was shivering for the two and a half hour journey and they were playing loud music and that was all designed in order to aggravate us. Two and a half hours later we arrived in Belmarsh prison in London and after being processed there, the officer said that you're going to the segregation unit. The segregation unit is also known as the block or it's known as the seg and it's the punishment unit where prisoners who have done crimes within the prison, they are kept there. In my case, I later found out the reason why I was um, being transferred there. There had been some incidents at Woodhill prison, some violent incidents where a non-Muslim prisoner, he attacked a Muslim prisoner and then some time later the Muslim prisoners, they beat him up and somehow they said the prison had uh, made an allegation that I gave the order for that prisoner to be beaten up. Of course there was no evidence to substantiate that but in prison the way it goes is just hearsay and, and assumptions and, and so-called uh, intelligence. So here I was um, in Belmarsh, I went to the segregation unit and I then went, after I came into my cell, I went to the window and I said, Assalamu alaikum, are there any brothers here? So outside my cell window, when I say window, it's a small window and there's bars, so you can't put out your, you can't stretch your, your, your arms out, but you can, you get, can get some fresh air. So when I said salam, there was a brother in a deep voice, he replied, Wa alaikum salam. We began to speak. I asked him the direction of the prayer and um, he told me which direction it was. Then we spoke, I asked him, who are you, what's your name and blah blah, we just began talking. And um, he told me his name was Abdul Hakim and he had been in various segregation units around the country for the last six months. He was a British Caribbean brother who was serving a life sentence for murder. 
And I think he had been in prison at that point. He had been in prison for about 11 or 12 years. So we got talking and then he said to me, he said, brother, could you teach me some knowledge? He said, I have a few Islamic books here, but I've read all of them and I'm eager to learn more. And so I said, of course, I said, let's, um, you know, let's, I will take you through the beginning of creation and we'll do all of the prophets of Allah and then we'll do the life of the Prophet Sallallahu as much as I can remember from my memory I'll try my best and we'll do that. I put in my mind that I might be in the segregation unit for several weeks so that might be a way for me to pass the time, the time doing something useful. So I would go to the window, I would have a cop uh, I would have a copy of the Quran with me. He would have a, a cop he would have a copy of the Quran with him and I would tell him okay, go to Surah Baqarah, go to Surah 2 verse 30, read it out. Then he would read it out and when your Lord and this was one of the verses that we did uh, the first story that is mentioned in the Quran وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكَ لِلْمَلَائِكَةِ إِنِّي جَاعِلٌ فِي الْأَرْضِ خَلِيفَةِ And when your Lord said to the angels, Indeed, I am going to put a vicegerent on the earth. That is the story of the Prophet Adam a.s. So he would read out the verse and then I will tell him the whole story about it and then we would go into the next Prophet and so on and so forth. So we would establish a routine where I would go to the window and I would stand there, I had my Qur'an, he had his Qur'an, I would ask him to read a verse, then I would explain it to him, and so on and so forth, we would do that. At some point I would get tired standing there and I would say, okay, can we have a break now? And he would say, sure, and then I would go lie down for a bit, then I would hear him calling me. So he kept on calling me, he was so eager to learn, he goes, are you ready brother? I said, I'm just resting, and he goes, okay. And then he kept on calling me and, and you know, we, we, then we would do it and it was never enough. And um, I said to him, is that okay? You know, can we stop now? And he goes, and he sighed and he goes, okay, brother. He goes, um, you know, I want to learn more, but I know I have to be patient. So 24 hours later, it was an officer came to me and said that we're moving you into the mainstream prison. And when I went to the window and I shouted out to Abdul Hakim and I told him that he was very sad. So the 24 hours I spent there and I spent several hours talking to this voice about the Quran and telling him stories. I did not know what he looked like because I never met him before. I didn't know him. I just knew that there was a Muslim brother and um, we just had that conversation for those 24 hours. So I got moved to the mainstream prison and then I went to another prison. About two or three years after that incident, then I was in another prison and it was Eid and I was celebrating Eid with the other prisoners. And this uh, brother came up to me, he was in his 30s and he was a large muscular guy. And um, he, said, uh, he said, you don't remember me, do you? And I said, um, I'm sorry, but I, I don't remind me, where have we met? And then he said, he said, I'm Abdul Hakim, and we did lessons together in the segregation unit at Belmarsh. And then we embraced and, and hugged each other. So whenever I read those verses about the story of Adam at the beginning of Surah Baqarah, it reminds me how learning knowledge, it's about trying your best in the circumstances that you are under. Here, this brother was a prisoner, he had read all the books he had, he had no access to knowledge, but he had that sincerity in his heart that he wanted to learn. And if you are truly sincere, then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will open doors for you. He will bring people into your life that will teach you, that will inspire you, and just have that sincerity, just have that sincere desire to learn and then leave the rest to him and he will open those doors for you. So that was today's uh, story and I hope to share another one with you tomorrow inshallah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. <laughs> فماذا يضيرك كيد العبيد